After discussing the difference between demand and quantity demanded, let's now understand the law of demand. The law of demand is a quite intuitive concept. It states that there is an inverse relationship between price of a good and its quantity demanded. So this means when price of a good rises, the quantity demanded for that good falls. And when price of a good falls, the quantity demanded for that good rises. This is something we all usually follow in our daily life. When the price of a product that we are consuming rises, either we cut down our consumption of that good or we simply switch to some other good which could be a substitute for that good. Let's take it this way. If you are someone who eats 8 cups of ice cream in a month when the price of ice cream is $1 per cup, then you won't consume the same number of cups if the price rises to $2 per cup. You might then consume only 6 cups per month or maybe you will switch to some other dessert which is cold and yummy just like ice cream is. But there is a caveat here. What if your salary gets doubled at the same time when the price of ice cream rises? Say you got to know in the morning that the price of ice cream has risen and in the evening your boss hands over a note to you which says that you have been promoted and your salary has been doubled. Will you now still think of reducing your consumption of ice cream from 8 cups to 6 cups? No. Right? Because why would you care for a $1 increase in the price of ice cream now? Your salary has just been doubled from $5,000 to $10,000. So in this case, even with the rise in price of ice cream, your consumption of ice cream won't change. Just like income, there are many other factors that may affect your demand behavior. For example, if someday you notice that you have put on a little weight, then you might decide to consume less ice cream even if the price of ice cream remains same. So basically, there are many other factors that affect your buying decisions apart from the price of the good. And while discussing the law of demand, we assume that all these factors are constant. So we assume that your income is constant, your taste and preferences are constant and all the other factors that may affect your buying decisions are constant. So to summarize this, we can say that according to law of demand, there is an inverse relationship between price of a good and its quantity demanded, keeping other factors constant. After discussing law of demand, let's now discuss demand schedule. A demand schedule is simply a table that captures the relation between price and quantity demanded. For example, have a look at the following table. This table shows the number of ice cream cups that you consume each month at different prices of ice cream. So if ice cream is free, you consume 10 cups per month. If the price increases to $1, you consume 8 cups per month. And as the price rises further, your consumption of ice cream keeps on decreasing. And when the price of a cup reaches $5, you stop consuming ice cream. This table here relating the price and quantity demanded is called demand schedule. Let me now show you how to draw a demand curve. It is quite simple to draw one actually. Demand curve is simply a graphic representation of demand schedule. In our demand schedule, we recorded two variables, price and quantity demanded. So let's draw two axes first, horizontal axis and vertical axis to represent these two variables. While drawing a demand curve, we take price on the vertical axis and quantity demanded on the horizontal axis. Now I can just replicate the combinations of price and quantity demanded that I recorded in the demand schedule on this graph. These six points here represent those combinations. And now I can simply join these points to get our demand curve. That's it. This is how a demand curve looks like. 
quite simple, right? Note that I have joined all the six points because there could be many possible price and quantity demanded combinations that I did not record in the demand schedule. So we need to account for those as well. As you can see, the demand curve here slopes downward. This is because a lower price increases the quantity demanded, keeping other factors constant. In almost all the situations, you will encounter a downward sloping demand curve only. But there are some situations where you can have an upward sloping demand curve as well. This happens when the law of demand fails to hold. I will discuss more on this in my next lecture.